I know I'm not the only one that has a guilty pleasure for the Fast and Furious franchise. I mean, clearly not, considering they're like the seventh highest grossing franchise of all time. Sometimes I do wish I would stop watching these movies altogether because they're beyond stupid, but it's also hard not to be curious. Like this new trailer, for example. They literally have a scene where a car is swinging off of a rope. The people writing these movies are a pair of baboons, man. They do not know how physics work. But god damn it, I need to see this movie. They've certainly got a secret charm to them, so I've decided that in preparation for Fast and Furious 9, I would rewatch all 9 films and put them in my own personal ranking. So, enough with all this yapping, here are my Fast and Furious movies ranked. So to start things off light, let's talk about the mess that is Hobbs and Shaw for a little bit. Do you know that one guy who overhears a joke and then tries repeating that same joke and it's just like, eh, it's not really funny when you do it. That's Hobbs and Shaw. Hey, we're not all gonna sit in circle Indian style, are we? <laughs> Get out. Get, no, this is not a joke, okay? It was offensive and lame, so double offensive. Look, I'm not against the idea of a Fast and Furious spin-off. I mean, that's basically what Tokyo Drift is and I can enjoy that to some extent, but the problem with Hobbs and Shaw is that I don't even like these characters that much in the first place. They're fine when they serve as supporting characters and Daddy Vin is doing the leading, but when all you have is Dwayne Johnson and Jason Statham playing themselves, this really becomes no different than their other dozen shit movies. Why does it even gotta be Fast and Furious, you know? And I know there's been some crazy stuff to come out of these movies, but seriously, what the hell is this plot? Whoever wrote these movies was clearly trying to play into the fact that these movies have become a meme, but also forgot they're missing the main and only ingredient that makes these movies work. I'm definitely gonna dog on some of the other movies in this franchise, but this is honestly the only one I truly despise. Fuck this movie. Fast and Furious is definitely a weird one for me. I noticed that this was sort of the turning point for the franchise, so there is some ridiculous stuff here, but they were also trying at the same time. See, this is back when people were taking these movies seriously, so they try to make this deep and mysterious plot, but they also have scenes where Vin Diesel is literally rewinding time of a crime scene because he's like fucking Batman or something. The whole scene is super hilarious, but you can tell that the writers really thought they were doing something. This movie basically had its foot in two doors for the majority of the runtime. It had too high of stakes to be grounded like the first one and everything that makes this movie dumb fun was improved in every single aspect in the sequels. Like the craziest thing you'll see here is Vin Diesel driving under an oil tank on fire which it's pretty cool but it's also very early in the movie and I also think that was in the trailer too so. Another reason why this isn't one of my favorites is, if we're talking story, this movie doesn't even matter anyways because they completely undo the whole point of it by the end credits of the fifth one, so whenever I watch this I'm just completely bored out of my mind. Speaking of movies in this franchise that were completely undone, Tokyo Drift. I think this is the one that's commonly referred to as the worst one, but let me give some reasons as to why it's not. First off, this movie is just way too iconic to be the worst one. This one definitely has the most style out of any other in the franchise and I gotta praise him for that. The Tokyo location is nice, the drifting is fun, and of course, the music. Tokyo Drift also happened to introduce a character that was so likable that the writers had to write scripts around his death just to bring him back. Twice. The worst parts of this movie? I would definitely have to say the acting, which I cannot defend, this movie has some straight horrid acting. I know that the dialogue in these movies aren't always the best, but the actors usually always seem to make it work most of the time. Here though, there is no charisma from the main character at all. What job? Delivering pizzas? Well, it's not the ride, it's the rider. Oh yeah, and he's supposed to be 17 by the way. Alright, so I know I just lost a lot of people with the placement of this one, but I can explain. I have never watched these movies for the plot. I watch these movies to have fun, so naturally I look forward to the over the top moments. I want the car explosions, I want the corny dialogue, I want the Vin Diesel superhuman scenes. 
Fast and the Furious is pretty iconic in its own right and as the first movie I think it does pretty well in introducing these characters and we even hear some of the iconic lines for the first time. But beyond that there's really not that much here for me. If anything I enjoyed the beginning all the way until the first street race which Jaru was fucking hilarious by the way. And then after all that, the rest is just kind of meh. Like I said, it's iconic in its own right. I respect it, but it also seems like every time I watch this, I'm finding less and less good things to say about it. So jumping quite ahead into the franchise, Fast and Furious 6 is another one that I would consider pretty forgettable, but it also has so many unintentional funny moments that it almost makes up for everything. This has got to be the most sloppy put together Fast and Furious movie to date. Like this was the first time that fans of the franchise were legitimately questioning what they just saw. What the hell? The plot of this film is, instead of them being criminals, they're actually working with the government to take down this team of bad guys. And why do they need Dom's crew for that you ask? Well, get this, and I swear I cannot make this shit up. The reasoning as to why is because these bad guys are just too damn fast. Uh, Adam Sandler actually wrote this one. So apart from having a completely incoherent plot, you also have the infamous catch scene, you have the most unintentionally hilarious fight, and you have Dwayne Johnson straight up forgetting his beard for a scene. Okay, so now we're getting into the ones that I would actually consider to be pretty good. Too Fast Too Furious does a pretty impressive job in that they actually made it work without Vin Diesel. So this being the sequel to the first one, I loved the change of tone for this movie. They traded in the dark streets of LA for the sunny skies of Miami along with the whole new cast for Brian O'Connor to meet. And yeah, I like this one because it takes itself a lot less serious and is just more laid back with it. This is also the only time I'll actually praise Roman for being a good character. You know, before the cast got too big and he was just sidelined to being cheap comedic relief. Since Roman actually has stuff to do in this movie, you'll notice that the man actually has natural charisma and the sequels just break his character down to the most basic elements. Paul Walker on the other hand is still his regular self but there is one thing I wanted to point out. I'm not sure if this movie came out at a strange time in pop culture but there is some strange behavior from his character this time around. Drop it, I don't want to talk about it. Drop it hell? I want to hear about this homie. I said forget about it cuz. Uh, you have Ludacris playing a guy with an afro. There's also this really awesome character played by Devin Aoki. I'm actually surprised they have yet to bring her character back into the franchise because she is money. She basically plays like this e-girl but this was all the way back in 2003 so she was pretty ahead of her time if you think about it. I also love that her car has a miniature sized version of her too. So fucking cool. The one thing I don't like about this movie is it's quote unquote villain played by not Matthew McConaughey. You've been on my payroll a long time. Ruin that ain't right. Shut up. Yeah, not a very intimidating man, so it makes for a sort of weak story, but that still doesn't mean it can't be fun. Um, there's not a whole lot to say about Fate of the Furious. It's the latest one to come out before this new one and it seems like they just flat out don't even attempt at creating a story anymore. I guess they're just focusing on amping up the chaos with each installment which hey I'm not complaining. Here you basically have an evil Dom storyline because he's being blackmailed by a character named Cypher. He either has to do what she says or she'll release a video of him dancing to Drunken Love by Beyonce. <laughs> Anyways, the majority of this movie is complete mayhem. Not everything makes sense, but at this point, if you're still asking questions, then you're not watching these movies right. Okay, do I even have to explain this one? Alright, aside from the obvious, which is the passing of Paul Blart, I do want to give some additional reasons as to why I have this so high up on the list. It's actually fucking hilarious. It's kind of mean to say that considering this is supposed to be Paul Walker's tribute film, but 
come on with these moments, bruh. Vin Diesel is an unstoppable machine. The man literally drives his car off of a cliff. Not only does he survive, but he also gets out of the car so casually, like, he's not even like, ouch, that really hurt. He just gets out and starts conversing like it didn't even happen. Talk to me, baby. Another great moment is when he's talking to Kurt Russell's character and they just pull out a bucket of Coronas. Would you like one? More of a Corona man myself. Uh. Yeah, nice subtlety, guys. I mean, I guess that CGI wasn't going to pay for itself. Jason Statham joins the cast on this one, which he's pretty okay, I guess. Family, as you all know, is one of the main themes in this franchise, so what they're doing now is giving everyone relatives and bringing them up at the last second so they can make a sequel. They did it here, they did it on 8, they did it on Hobbs and Shaw, and now they're doing it on Fast 9. Like, I get it, nothing is more powerful than family, but what the fuck, dude? Where are all these people coming from? And of course, who can forget this iconic moment? Thing about street fights? The street always wins. Yeah, this movie's all over the place, but depending on your mood, you have the best of both worlds here. You can either laugh your ass off or you can just cry. It's all up to you. Well, this is it. This is what I consider to be the best Fast and the Furious movie. I don't think anyone was expecting for this movie to be as good as it was, but here we are. This movie was the Fast and Furious formula perfected in my opinion. It's all essentially a heist movie, but being five movies in deep at this point, everything was built up nicely. Dominic, Brian, and Mia are all wanted fugitives at this point and they get wind of a really big score to take. This is when they bring in the rest of the crew for the first time and it was actually a pretty joyous moment. Dwayne Johnson's character gets introduced here as well and he's a fine addition too. His pursuit for the crew only adds to the list of problems they're already facing and it just makes the whole plot even more thrilling. There are about 12 main cast members in this movie and it surprisingly didn't even feel crowded. All of them have their fair share of screen time and I think it all went pretty smooth. So aside from this having a well built story and fun new characters, the real crown jewel of this movie is its third act. The third act of this movie has got to be the peak of the franchise and it's pretty obvious that they've been chasing a moment like this ever since. The coolest part about it though was that it wasn't all special effects. The whole vault chase scene was a real stunt that was orchestrated for this movie. Two real stuntmen dragged a 9,000 pound vault around and smashed it into fake sets that they built. The details on how they pulled this off is just amazing and I'll actually link a video down below where the stunt coordinator breaks down everything so you guys can go watch that for yourselves. If you can't already tell, this could have been the perfect ending for the franchise if they didn't get so damn greedy. It honestly just doesn't make any sense on why there was any need to continue the story after this. Everyone actually got satisfying closure, well, except for these guys, and so they really set themselves up to go nowhere else but down. And don't get me wrong, I'm still enjoying these movies, but wow. What a huge missed opportunity to actually have had a well-executed franchise. I guess they really are ending it with the 11th one, but... I can't think of an ending that would have made all of this worth it. Oh well, I guess we'll just have to see it when it gets here, but for now, we have Fast 9 to keep us entertained till then. So that was my list for the Fast and Furious films ranked. Vin Diesel already Venmoed me the money for promoting his movies, so I won't keep you any longer than I need to. Now if you don't mind me, I'm gonna go to my nearest AMC and get me the family combo. And hey, I'll even be sure to let y'all know where this newest one lies in the comments down below. That's all I got. Thank you guys for watching my video. I hope you have a very blessed day. I'm out of here.